Okie dokie everybody, welcome to Movies in the Man Cave. For those of you who don't know, the NFL season kicks off this week. And if you can't tell, we're a little bit excited about it. A little bit. So in addition to our helmets and jerseys and the football on the pedestal here, we have our top five football, football movies of all time for you. Yeah. This helmet's very heavy, so I'm not going to wear it yeah, through the entire show. I'll put it right there, so you know, so you know. Yeah. Well, if that's how it's going to be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we're ready to give you our top five. Football movies of all time, and I think Jared's going to start. I, mean, I want to clarify something before we start. This is our top five favorite football movies of all time. This yes. isn't a list of the best football. I think when we did our baseball episode, we got in a little bit of trouble for picking our favorites and not maybe the best. Right. So this is our favorite five football movies. Our personal favorites. Of all time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one, I, I, I'd never heard of it until I got it as a gift. And I watched it, and it was a fabulous football movie. It is Invincible with mm. Mark Wahlberg. Um, true story. Uh, he basically just like you know, walk on for the Eagles um, back in the seventies, I believe. Um, and he just you know just a local bartender in Philly, and goes and tries out, makes the team, and history ensues, if you will. What I like about that one is it. Rather than focusing on the season, that's more of like training camp battles, so it shows kind of what it takes for these guys to make a team. Mm -hmm. um, just all the trials that they have to go through and how the difference between being faster than one guy by half a second can mean you're an uh, NFL player and a millionaire or you're nothing at all. So that yep. was an interesting look at it behind the scenes. Yeah, I enjoy, I like that movie too. My number five, and this is why I say this is not the best football movies ever, but our favorite is Little Giants. Uh, starring Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill, yep. uh, two brothers who are competing. One has a professional Little League football team, and the other has a bunch of scrubs. So uh, it's it's childish, I understand, but I would say it's the sandlot of football movies. That's exactly the way to describe it. Um, it I was never going to make the football team when I was a kid. So I, I, I could feel empathy for these kids that yeah. were smaller and slower and more boogery than yeah, the other kids. Say, you were the kid with the booger. So, <laughs> uh, so I could feel for them, and, and it, was, it was a lot of fun. So that's my number five. Excellent. Uh, my number four is kind of a local story, sort of, kind of. Uh, Leathernecks mm -hmm. with George Clooney and Renee Zellweger, some other dude. Um, John Krasinski from The Office. There you go. Um... Yeah, it's about the the Duluth. I think it was Bull, Duluth. Yeah, Duluth Bulldogs or something. Uh, anyway, basically, it's talking about how um, you know back in the day, like college ball was way bigger than pro ball, and uh, just kind of you know follows George Clooney as kind of the you know experienced vet, and then the rookie dude coming in, and you know kind of a love triangle going on. You know, uh, really funny movie. Um, Outrageous fight scene between George Clooney and, and what's his face um, on the train team. tracks. Like, just stupid funny. But. I might have to watch that again because I did not find it that funny. I had high the hopes for it. The fight uh, scene, I think, is the most funny. George Clooney can be really good in comedy. Renee Zellweger, I don't particularly care for, but John yeah. Krasinski, I love him in the office as Jim. And I figured that would trans you know transfer well to the big screen. But I wasn't too impressed. But mm -hmm. I've only seen it the one time. Maybe I went in with too high hopes. Maybe. Maybe I'll have to watch it again. I was literally going for it for the fight scene. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, my number four is one of the classic ones. It is Rudy. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen Rudy. Samwise Ganji is a little guy who walks in at Notre Dame. And it's a lot like uh, Invincible, where it's trying to show what it takes for him to get on this team and just get into a game for a play. You know, that's right. all he wants is to play one exactly. one play in a Notre Dame uniform. And there's obviously the final scene. Everybody's chanting his name, and he gets in and gets yep. gets the sack, and he's a hero and infamous. Fantastic movie. Infamous. Uh, my number three, again, have to emphasize our favorites, um, is Waterboy. Hmm. Adam Sandler. Um, you know, he just plays the, the water boy who really really loves water um ends up that he can really tackle you know they throw him in there because you know he's 
exceptionally good at tackling. Uh, it's got um, Henry Winkler in there, uh, the Fonz, if you don't know. And it's, I mean, it's your basic Adam Sandler movie, but you throw football in the mix a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it's just dumb and awesome. It has wrestling in there, too. You're a big wrestling guy. It does. And it has, a big yep. fan of Captain Insano. Exactly. Captain Insano shows no mercy. No. So, yeah, fair enough pick. Uh, I'm not going to agree or disagree, I guess. Okay. Uh, my number three is The Replacements, starring Keanu, Keanu. Reeves. Uh, the NFL goes much like we almost had a strike and yeah. lockout this season, so they bring Oops. in a bunch of scabs to come and fill their place. Uh, really funny movie. The The football scenes and action is good, but it's not realistic. I mean, it's one of those movies where you watch and it's like, well, that play would never really happen. You couldn't do it like that, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't matter because it's a funny movie. It's a good movie. Uh, it has Orlando Jones in it, who I think was really funny and underused. I think he's probably past the point where he's going to be in anything these days, yeah. but... Uh, I really liked him, and uh, he had a nice supporting role. Gene Hackman, yeah, a couple others. So and nothing really happened with Keanu Reeves either. Yeah, he didn't have a career at all. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, my number two was surprisingly low on your list was Little Giants. Hmm. Um, for all the same reasons, obviously it was you know it's super childish, and it's probably because we were kids when that movie came out. And it's, it's, I think anybody our age. Yeah. Is gonna relate and like that movie. Yeah. Maybe some, you know, a uh, generation older might not feel it, but you're right. Yeah, and you know, I loved um, Married with Children, and so having Ed O'Neill in there, you know, as the jerk older brother, like, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. Um, and even just all the characters in there. You got his daughter that plays football, Icebox, Icebox. you know, and uh, it, it's just really well done movie in that aspect. It's just, you know funny for funny's sake basically um and it does have a pretty cool story but it's one of those ones that if you see it on tv you're gonna stop at least for a couple minutes and yep. then watch it you know so. definitely yeah uh number two for me is an adam sandler football movie but it's not the water boy it's oh. the longest yard yep. uh i've brought this up on the show before when we did our top five adam sandler um uh, i did not really care for the original it was the grittier version. I liked the newer modern version. Um, but the first time I saw it, it was just constant laughs. I don't know necessarily if the rewatchability is there for that one as much. I've still watched it a couple of times yeah. and enjoyed it. Um, the Wet Willie scene. I, I love the Wet Willie scene for whatever reason. Uh, no real other actors in it. I mean, Burt Reynolds has like a cameo and Chris yeah. Rock is in there a little bit, but... Uh, Funny movie, football, you know, guys in jail, so they kind of go crazy and just take it as a chance to beat up on the guards. So. The big, huge guy in that movie is also a pro wrestler. So Which big, huge guy? Because there's like the, three. The monster the guy monsters. who barely talks. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that movie almost made my list, too. Uh, but yeah, I think the rewatchability is kind of low on it for me. But I have my, a feeling we're going to come up with the same number one. I... I'm actually going to have to disagree. Okay. All right, let's hear it. Because my number one was already on your list. Oh, never mind. And that was Rudy. Oh, okay. Rudy, for me, is... That is football movie, for me. Like, I... The rewatchability on that subject... I could, I, I could watch that movie, like, every day, you know? Um, even just, like, the story is fantastic, but then the, the music in it just gives you goosebumps, you know? And if you don't, you know get get kind of emotional when he opens his letter from Notre Dame and stuff. It's like, you have no soul. That that part is just, um, just, ugh, <laughs> you know? That's just me, maybe. I mean, I obviously think it's a good movie. It was on my list, so I can't vault you when that number one. I think yeah. a lot of people would have that definitely at the top of their list. So, yeah. That's good my number one. Inspiring. There it is, inspiring. Yes. I'm surprised this one was not on your list. My number one is Remember the Titans. Ah, yeah. Starring Denzel Washington. Um, it, it's great on, on multiple levels. It's a great football movie. The actual football scenes in it are really well done and believable. But it's also great as a, a time period piece about segregation in the South in the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, putting the first black players on a white football team and... Uh, both the problems and the positives that come out of that. Yeah. So, uh, so it tells a really good story. The football's really good. 
Um, Denzel Washington. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. obviously he's going to play a good part and um, definitely one I watch all the time. I mean, you mentioned the music and Rudy being a time period piece. Yeah. You know, I get to hear the true. Temptations and, you know, that's true. all the good music from then, so that was really enjoyable. Yeah. There's a lot that, that could have made the list, and it was hard, again, to come up with five. Remember the Titans should have made the list. I'm should sorry. have made the list. I'm sorry. But like I said, I mean, your number four and five are my number one and two, so. All right. Uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. That's our top five football movies. Let us know what you think. What did we miss out on? Probably a lot that people are. I'm sure. Yeah. But that's fine. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's go to the quotes. Did we get a winner from our quote last week, Jared? Yes, we did. Mr. Andrew Selders. Oh, boy. He's on a hot streak. Was that yeah. three of the last four, maybe? I believe so. Not bad. Not a bad yeah. percentage. Let's check out the clip. Damn, folks. Rule 16. Give me an up-to-date family tree. That was your mistake. You made me look like an idiot. Rule number 76. No excuses. Play like a champion. That is The Wedding Crashers. Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn. A uh, very, very funny movie. Yeah. Uh, a lot of quotes to pick out of that one, but very few that didn't have curse words in it. Yeah, definitely. So, if you have the unrated version, you know. Not a lot to use in there. So, uh, we have a quote for you this week. If you know the answer, put it in the comments. It is. We have the rest of our lives to be mediocre, but we have the opportunity to play like gods for the next half of football. That's a long quote right there. It is long, but it's... It's inspiring. There you go. That's one of those halftime speeches that gets you pumped up. So, if you know what it is, all these things going across the bottom, go to any of them, all leave right. a comment. Also, give us what you think about our top five football movies. Coming out this week, Jared, let's move on quickly here. Okay, uh, we have Contagion, which I've heard is supposed to be like a 28 Days Later, The Stand, kind of end of the world, everyone's getting sick kind of thing. I personally think it looks cool. I think it looks cool, too. It seems like... All the zombie movies we've seen, both about the zombies. Instead of right. dying and becoming undead, people just die. So it's yep. an outbreak type. Very. Yeah, it looks really good. Warrior, I'm not too excited about. No. It looks a lot like, what is that, The Fighter that came out with yeah. Wahlberg and Christian yeah. Bale a couple of months ago. Uh, seems very similar to that. I know it's brother against brother in this one, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mediocre and Bucky Larson... Born to be a star comes out this week, and I just want to punch the TV when those commercials come on. Yeah, I, yeah, I have nothing to say about that movie. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really a big Nick Swardson fan. I've seen a stand up, and it's not. Yeah, it looks like the guy version of uh, Superstar that came out mm. a billion years ago. Yeah, um, I could see that. Yeah, not looking forward to that at all. I don't think it'll do well. No. Clearly, we're through our run of summer blockbusters, and we're kind of on to the leftovers. Yep. So, Peter and out. Leftover pizza pie. That is it for this week. Woo! So, we have a mini episode coming for you this weekend. Make sure to check that out. Go 49ers on Sunday. Woo! -woo. Hey. What? I didn't know we were plugging our team. Have a nice week. Hey! <laughs> Go Vikings. Woo! Ah! You're supposed to do that too. No. Oh. Okay. You know, you're lucky you're not a Packers fan. You couldn't wear your jersey. You would have chroma keyed right out of the picture. Good thing I'm not a Packers fan. Good thing, I suppose.